Yeah. Hello, I am Ravi Vishweshwaraya Sharada Prasad. Jawaharlal Nehru is frequently accused of ensuring that his daughter, Indira Gandhi, became Prime Minister. But it is little remembered today that Jawaharlal Nehru actually wanted J.P. Jayaprakash Narayan to succeed him and Nehru was broken by J.P.'s repeated refusals to be groomed as his chosen heir. Uh, actually, uh, the Congress Party in uh, pre-independence India was very concerned about succession planning and they often chose young presidents. Uh, most of the presidents of the Congress Party were in their 40s. Jawaharlal Nehru was um, 40 when he first became um, Congress president in 1929. And many of the Congress presidents were in their 30s. Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Subhash Chandra Bose, uh, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad. Um, in fact, one of the many reasons why Jawaharlal Nehru was chosen as the Prime Minister over Sardar Ballabhai Patel in 1947 was that Nehru was 58 years old uh, compared to Sardar Patel's 72. Uh, Nehru was born in 1889 and uh, Sardar Patel in 1875. And Nehru was in far, far better health than Sardar Vallabhai Patel. And in fact, it was JP who had got all the socialists uh, in the Congress party to support Nehru against the conservative bloc uh, which had, was led by Sardar Vallabhai Patel. After Sardar Vallabhai uh, Patel's um, demise in uh, December 1950, Nehru was keen on Jayaprakash Narayan to succeed him. Uh, J.P. was 13 years um, younger than Nehru. Uh, J.P. was born in um, 1902. Uh, Nehru wanted J.P. to succeed him in view of J.P.'s amazing organizational abilities, which were exhibited during the freedom struggle and J.P.'s uh, daring escape from jail, where he had climbed over st several 20-foot uh, high walls, and uh, J.P. had run for 70 miles. And uh, the intellectual Jawaharlal Nehru greatly admired J.P.'s advanced education in the USA. J.P. had... Uh, postgraduate uh, degrees in chemistry, in sociology, and in political science from Berkeley, uh, the University of California at Berkeley, the University of, of Iowa, the University of Ohio, and uh, most importantly, um, JP had a long stint at the University of uh, Wisconsin uh, at Madison, where he was a protege of the eminent uh, sociologist um, Edward Ellsworth Ross. And JP's outstanding uh, managerial skills had been honed uh, during his years as the secretary to the big industrialist Gansham Das Birla. And these uh, managerial skills and organizational skills of JP Came, were clearly exhibited during his leadership of the Quit India movement in 1942. And Jawaharlal Nehru wanted a successor who understood the U.S. political system. Nehru realized that after World War II, power had shifted from U.K. to U.S.A., and all the leading politicians in India were British educated, and the only two, uh, the only ones who had been educated in the USA were Bhimrao Ambedkar and JP, and both were the most highly educated among Indian politicians of that time. And JP knew the American um, political system because JP had actually spent a couple of years working as an intern to the Republican governor of Wisconsin, as well as to the Republican senator of Wisconsin, even though J.P. was a Marxist. 
And then JP also understood the working class and the trade unions. Uh, uh, JP had worked as an auto mechanic and as a fruit picker and as a fruit canning uh, factory uh, in USA to fund his education there. And JP understood the business world also. Uh, JP had been the right-hand man of Ganesham Das Bidla when he returned from the USA. And JP was widely respected in the labor union. He was a trade union leader too. Also, there were the interpersonal uh, relations uh, uh, played a major role. Uh, JP's wife, uh, Prabhavati Devi G, was the closest friend of Kamala Nehru. And when Motilal Nehru was dying in 1931, it was uh, JP's wife, Prabhavati Devi G, who nursed Motilal Nehru during his last uh, months. And in fact, JP was even an executor of Motilal Nehru's will when Motilal bequeathed his uh, fortune to the freedom movement. And uh, most important factor that uh, played in Jawaharlal Nehru's mind was that Jawaharlal Nehru had noted to himself in his uh, private notings that he himself was not infallible. Uh, Nehru was aware that many of his cabinet colleagues were too scared uh, of him to speak their mind frankly and to voice their differences uh, with him. And in fact, Nehru had contempt uh, for many of his cabinet colleagues. He had noted uh, privately that there were men of straw who lacked the courage to frankly disagree with him. And um, in fact, to digress a little, it was Mahatma Gandhi uh, who had counseled Nehru about his relations uh, with his colleagues. And the letter which Mahatma Gandhi wrote to Jawaharlal Nehru, uh, I think the date was 15 July 1936, that has got to be one of the most profound and elegantly written pieces of political advice uh, ever given. So Gandhiji wrote, uh, to uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, the fact is that your colleagues have lacked your courage and frankness. The result has been disastrous. I have always pleaded with them to speak out to you freely and fearlessly. But having lacked the courage, whenever they have spoken, they have done it clumsily and you have felt irritated. I tell you, they have dreaded you because of your irritability and impatience of them. They have chafed under your rebukes and magisterial manner, and above all, your arrogation of what has appeared to them, your infallibility and superior knowledge. They feel that you have treated them with scant courtesy and never defended them from the socialist's ridicule and even misrepresentation. And that is what uh, Mahatma Gandhi wrote to Jawaharlal Nehru, counselling him. And um, anyway, to return to uh, JP and uh, Jawaharlal Nehru, after his massive victory in the 1952 Lok Sabha elections, JP uh, Jawaharlal Nehru invited JP to form his government as his deputy, to be his conscience keeper, and to counsel him uh, Nehru uh, that uh, that JP should counsel Nehru whenever he felt that uh, Nehru was in the wrong, and in fact Nehru even proposed a merger between the Congress Party and uh, JP's uh, Praja Socialist Party. Uh, JP had left the Congress in 1948 because he felt uh, that it was not socialist enough and Acharya JB Kripalani had joined uh, JP a couple of years later after he um, uh, after Kripalani lost the election for the president of the Congress party to Purushottam Das Tandon who was the candidate of Sardar uh, uh, Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel but uh, JP rebuffed all of uh, Jawaharlal Nehru's overtures 
GP had this image of himself of being a saint and as a successor to Mahatma Gandhi, far, far above the lure of office. JP saw himself as the next Mahatma Gandhi, not as the next Prime Minister. And Nehru interpreted this uh, as JP's not wanting to take um, responsibility for governance and administration. And Nehru felt down that the man whom he wanted to groom as his chosen successor was not willing to take on responsibility for running a difficult country. Uh, the person who noted down the meetings between uh, Jawaharlal Nehru and uh, Jai Prakash Narayan was uh, Jawaharlal's uh, relative, the ICS officer B.K. Nehru, Bridge Kumar Nehru. And uh, B.K. Nehru had been ambassador to USA and high commissioner to UK and governor of Kashmir and Gujarat. And Bridge Kumar Nehru's note uh, is noteworthy for its elegance and its insights into JP's uh, mindset. Uh, so BK Nehru uh, noted down, the Prime Minister was naturally delighted at his complete victory in the election. What he was unhappy about was the absence of an opposition whom he could respect and who could suggest constructive alternatives. The PM told Mr. Narayan that he was not all-knowing. He needed somebody to point out where he was going wrong and to suggest alternatives to achieve agreed goals. His cabinet were all hollow, pusillanimous men. Whatever their inner qualms were, they dare not give voice to their misgivings. The Prime Minister invited Mr. Narayan to form such an opposition within his cabinet. And uh, Bridge Kumar Nehru, uh, B.K. Nehru continued, The Prime Minister asked Mr. Narayan, cajoled him, then begged him, and then again tried to persuade him to perform such a role to lead him back to the right path whenever he was about to stray. But Mr. Narayan's answer was steadfastly, no. And B.K. Nehru went on, Mr. Narayan was totally negative, not positive. He was totally destructive, not constructive. He would criticize, he would agitate, he would even encourage violence but he would not suggest any positive, constructive way to achieve what he thought required to be done. He did not, in fact, know what should, in positive terms, be done. And this is what uh, Bridge Kumar Nehru had noted down in 1952, and it really came true in 1974-1975 when uh, JP led the opposition to Indira Gandhi and no one was sure that what did JP really want. My father was one of the negotiators. Uh, 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 he was Indira Gandhi's interlocutor with JP and he had known JP since the 1950s, but he was just never sure what uh, JP wanted. And... Uh, to return back to JP and uh, Jawaharlal Nehru in 1952, 53, 54, uh, Jai Prakash Narayan replied back to Jawaharlal Nehru, Gandhian constructive workers would betray their ideals if they did not boldly play a corrective role, offering friendly, constructive, non-partisan, advice and criticism and, if need be, even opposition in the form of non-cooperation. Nor can eschewing of party politics mean indifference to the manner and outcome of elections. True, those who have eschewed party politics are not expected to take any partisan stand, but they may, 
with complete consistency raise general political and ideological issues for the guidance of the electorate, the parties and the candidates. This is what JP wrote to Jawaharlal Nehru and uh, Nehru replied back to uh, JP, In India, there are all kinds of disruptive and reactionary forces. There is also the inertia of ages. And it is very easy for the inert mass to be roused by some religious or caste or linguistic or, or provincial or like cry and thus to come in the way of all progress. This is the real opposition in the country and it is a tremendously strong one. And this is what you seem to ignore completely. We have constantly to battle against it. And that is what Jawaharlal Nehru replied to JP. This is what you seem to ignore completely. The uh, correspondence of Nehru and uh, JP uh, to join uh, his cabinet and to be groomed as uh, Nehru's successor and of JP repeatedly declining continued all through 1952 and 1953 and till 1954 really. And in JP's Praja Socialist Party, the matter of JP and Acharya JB Kripalani taking up Nehru's invitation to join his cabinet was uh, discussed at length. Ashoka Mehta was uh, totally in favor of it, but Acharya J.B. Kripalani said that the Praja Socialist uh, Party should, prov should provide support to Nehru's government from outside, but that neither he, uh, neither Kripalani himself nor J.P. should join uh, Nehru's cabinet. This was Acharya J.B. Kripalani's uh, view. And, but it was Ram Manohar Lohia and Acharya Narendra Dev, they were vehemently opposed to any support for Jawaharlal Nehru at all. And they vetoed the idea of JP and Acharya JP Kripalani uh, joining uh, Nehru's cabinet. And Acharya JP Kripalani, in fact, he drifted more and more leftward. And he became one of Nehru's harshest critics. It, in fact, uh, after the Chinese invasion, it was Acharya J.B. Kripalani uh, who moved the uh, no-confidence motion against Jawaharlal Nehru. And this was the man whom Nehru had supported for the president of the Congress party. Nehru wanted J uh, 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 Kripalani in his cabinet as much as he wanted J.P. And uh, uh, then... Um, J.P. left party politics. He propagated his ideas for a party-less, grassroots democracy at the village level. And he went into social work and the Bhutan movement. And then my father, Ichwa Sharada Prasad, who was uh, worked with Jawaharlal Nehru and who knew J.P. very well, had written then uh, J.P.'s persistent refusal to assume political authority is a real waste of a vast and unusual national resource. And my father continued, uh, JP is a very baffling philosophical anarchist, ready to fight the aberrations of the state, but reluctant to assume any office of responsibility himself. And this is what my father, H.Y. Uh, Sharada Prasad, had written way back in the 1950s. My conjecture is that J.P., the hero of the 1942 Quit India movement, he remained stuck in the revolutionary ethos and the E. Day Fix of uh, 1942, not realizing that a new nation had to be built. And Indira Gandhi always felt that J.P. had let her father down uh, when uh, Nehru had needed uh, him, uh, J.P., the most. And Nehru really took J.P.'s rejection uh, to heart as well as Kripalani's rejection. Nehru really was shattered by their rejection. 
uh, their repeated rejections because it was Nehru who was very, very uh, fond of the socialist uh, ideology. And he was, <laughs> Nehru was baffled that the, so that the socialists did not want to join hands with him. And uh, Indira Gandhi always blamed JP for the decline in uh, her father's health that Jawaharlal Nehru had to face the burdens of office uh, all on his own. And in fact, it was this kind of rankling that blew up in 1974-1975 when JP led the, his uh, andolan against Indira Gandhi. The resentment that JP rejected Nehru's uh, pleas for his support. And then it was um, Govind Balapant and Ewan Debert, they utilized this excuse of JP's reluctance to assist Jawaharlal Nehru to push their agenda of getting Indira Gandhi to enter politics and Govind Balapant and Ewan Debert to push their right-wing policies by influencing Indira Gandhi and operating through her as a pliant facade. So G.B. Pant and U.N. Debert kept telling Indira Gandhi that there was no one else other than her that Nehru could rely on and that it was her duty to assist her father because everyone else would let him down, just as J.P. and Kripalani did. And it was U.N. Debert and Govindwala Pant who engineered Indira Gandhi's election as the president as the president of the Congress Party in uh, 1959, and Nehru was really not overtly enthusiastic about his daughter becoming the president of the Congress Party while he was prime minister. But Nehru did not oppose her elevation uh, to the president of the Congress Party either. Nehru was quite ambivalent about. Uh, Indira Gandhi's uh, entry into active politics and um, in fact father and daughter had numerous differences during her one year long uh, tenure as president of the Congress party mostly over the dismissal of the uh, communist government in Kerala and after her one year term as president of the Congress party uh, was over uh, Indira Gandhi returned back to being uh, Nehru's official hostess. And in fact, after Nehru's demise in May uh, 1964, Lal Bahadur Shastri, who was clearly the uh, choice of the Congress party um, after the Kamraj plan in 1963, Lal Bahadur Shastri indicated that if JP had given even the slightest indication uh, of wanting to become the Prime Minister, then he, that is Lal Bahadur Shastri, would immediately step aside in favour of JP, Jai Prakash Narayan. And the history of Indian politics would have been very, very different if uh, Jai Prakash Narayan had accepted uh, 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 Jawaharlal Nehru's offer to become Deputy Prime Minister and his successor as Prime Minister. And probably Indira Gandhi would really have not become Prime Minister if JP had uh, accepted Nehru's offer to uh, become the Prime Minister after him. Because even Shastri said he was willing to step aside in favour of JP. And Shastri often um, said that JP was the best qualified person to become the Prime Minister after Jawaharlal Nehru. Okay, is that all right? Yeah, is that okay? Yes, okay. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel and my IGTV uh, channel. And please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And especially follow me on Twitter. My Twitter account is at RVP. At RVP. This is Rabi Vishweshwaraya Sharada Prasad saying goodbye. Have a wonderful day. Okay, see you. Okay, see you. Okay. Okay. Okay.